Anna, your concert was phenomenal, and, and I always try to tell my students to use their whole arm like you taught me to the elbows swing out and everything. It, it makes such a beautiful tone in the way you use your wrists. Absolutely incredible, and I've told so many people about Anna whole approach technically and musically how to use this together and expressive playing and the whole thing. But um, how, how has your life changed since you um, emigrated to the East Coast? What, what's changed about your life? Well, um, it has changed and it hasn't. It, what it has done and it has developed. It has developed in the uh, direction that it was going before. So it would, it, it's a mixture of uh, teaching. I had, I had the fortune of landing in a wonderful music school, which is Westminster Choir College yeah. and Westminster Conservatory. Yeah. So I've had the opportunity to develop myself yeah. and um, put um, projects into, into practice. Mm -hmm. um, I've been department head at the Westminster Conservatory for many years. That's the community music school division. Right. I noticed because you're head of the conservatory for the children. Yeah, about the conservatory. Yeah. I, but I also work for Westminster Park right. College. Right. So I have a variety mm -hmm. of students and I have wonderful colleagues. So yeah. I feel like I've been given the opportunity to continue learning mm -hmm. uh, from different points of view. Mm -hmm. And that has been really important to me. Do you go to, into New York a lot to Carnegie Hall? And you know, I don't go as, as often as mm -hmm. I could. Mm -hmm because I'm only an hour and a half from New York. Mm. But on the other hand, a lot of the concerts come to Princeton before they go to New York. That's interesting. So uh, I do get to hear a lot of the soloists and sometimes mm -hmm. the ensembles that come and they do play in Princeton before they go there. I do go, I, I'm in right in between uh, New York and Philadelphia. So I do go when I can, but I'm so busy that I don't, I can't, you know, it takes me a day. I mean, yeah. it takes. And in amidst your busy schedule, um, how do you keep up, you know, the repertoire and the developing of new repertoire and so well, forth? That's that's a challenge. Yeah. And uh, my colleagues and I are always yeah. talking about that. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I think it's important mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I think if you stop playing, mm -hmm. then it's, it's not as good. So, but it's a, it's a question of scheduling. And you have to put yourself first sometimes. Absolutely. So I try to practice in the morning, which is why, when I function, when and my mind is in learning mode. How I does, put my lessons later. How does teaching grow your performing? How does teaching grow your, uh, your whole attitude toward performing and, and your feelings about the, the various periods of music that you study? Well, they really go hand in hand. I think I'm a much better teacher when I'm performing myself because mm -hmm. I, I know exactly what the student's going on. Right. And uh, I'm a better performer when I'm, when I'm teaching. You know, they say that the teacher is the one that learns the more, the most in a teaching situation. So I'm also in a university setting yeah. where I have opportunity to take classes once in a while myself. So I keep so you're yeah. really growing all the time. And I have a feeling that I'm still learning, and that's the best. One should stay a student forever. Thank you so much, Anna. I appreciate it.